Good afternoon, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 3.0 Day 37. So, yesterday we started our series on designs or the design submenu applet, and we're going to continue that today. Uh, yesterday we talked about the basics of designs. Today we're going to talk to you about the basics of WeBrand, and WeBrand is the basically graphic editor that's uh, within designs that we utilize to create these assets and documents. So let's dive in. We're just going to do a test social design. And I'm just going to choose kind of a random one. Uh, we're not actually going to go through the entire creation process. I'm just going to kind of show you uh, what we brand, the we brand editor kind of can do. So we're just going to choose an agent site, Facebook, and let's just use this first one. That way I can introduce you to some of the things that WeBrand has in their menu section. So let's start here on the left hand side. I'm going to walk through these three things and then as we continue through the videos we'll walk through these buttons, these buttons, and these buttons in addition to some of these items down below. But to start we're going to start here on the left hand side. So the first uh, menu we have here in WeBrand is images. You can see we have three options. We have my library, we have company, and we have add. So if I click on add, you'll see I have the ability to add images from my Facebook page, from my Facebook business pages, and this is more, I guess, Facebook profile, Facebook business pages, my Instagram account, Google Drive, Dropbox, or I can actually click here and then get into my file explorer, depending on which computer style I have, and start pulling documents from there. So, excuse me, or images. <clears throat> so let's just say Facebook. And typically it's going to say, do you give, and I believe it's designer is the name of the company or the name of the app, D-E-S-Y-N-E-R, I believe. Um, and it'll say designer wants permission to access your Facebook account. And once you approve that, then you'll see it's going to start allowing you to pull in photos from your photo albums here on Facebook. If I choose Facebook pages, uh, it's going to do the same thing. Here we go. So you previously linked designer to Facebook. Would you like to continue? I'm going to say yes. Um, otherwise, it may just ask you to let designer link. So on my Facebook page, I could bring in here. Uh, here's one of my uh, property logos or my team logos, excuse me. Um, Instagram, same exact thing. Google Drive, same exact thing. So you have the ability to pull in images from any of these sources and you'll see those imported images down below here. The second option that you have is to utilize images that the company has already provided for us. So you can see I can click on this folder of KW Stock Images and I can see an entire series of kind of home-based, family-based, etc. images that I have the ability to use in any of my assets or graphics or content that I'm creating in the future. So an entire series there that I would be able to use if I were to select one of those. My library, I have the ability to build out my own library of images that I use very regularly. So obviously your headshot is an image you're probably going to use very regularly. Your Market Center DBA logo is one that you would use very regularly. In order to add to your library, you're just going to come down here and click on Add to Library. And then you're going to see, all right, so we want to add to your images section. And I'm not sure why this background, oh, it's taking a while here to load. Uh, but typically you're going to have the opportunity to select four images and then four backgrounds as well. Uh, once you get in here, you also have the ability to uh, create some logos and save those in your library. You can do a branding kit where you select specific colors. Uh, text, you can choose specific fonts that you like to use. Um, so there's a lot of availability to do customization within the library. It looks like that's giving us a touch of trouble right now. And yet that's how you would add those images or graphics to your library. If you wanted to add text to your graphic, you would come over here and click on text. And you can see you have the ability to add a title, subtitle, body text, text block. If you click on banners, you get into some of those kind of fun stuff that you may see in like programs like Canva, etc., where you could just drag these over um, if you like the way that they look and kind of drop those somewhere in your graphic and then change the text later on. You have the ability to bring in company text. So uh, things like the ownership statement, you could click on that and there it is already written completely correct, spelled correctly, 
uh, written as it should be written as well. And then you can click on my library and then you see obviously a lot of information that's been pulled over from my, um, I think it's my command profile actually. So my team name, phone number, this is actually my full bio, uh, my email and a couple different formats, name and then the address of my market center as well. Next, you can come over to icons and similar to images, you have the ability to add icons if you wanted to. You have some stock ones here. So if you wanted to add in some stock images, you know, just kind of some fun stuff there, you can look through. Uh, company icons. So here is a uh, cell phone, regular phone. Um, you know, just if you wanted to do your worldwide web address, here would be your regular address, your email. Uh, you know, you have those availability. And then you can come into my library. And again, let's see if second time's the charm. Nope, oh, getting a little bit closer. I don't know why it's still transparent. And yet you could come in and add logos by clicking on any one of these plus signs or click an icon. Once I click on the plus, it's gonna say, where is the icon you want to add? And then that icon would be saved here under my library right here. Anytime you came into the icon section. Finally, you have the logo. So you have the ability again to add logos to your library or you can click on company and you can see there are a variety of logos here. Now just be careful if you're putting a logo in your design, um, you want to make sure that you are operating under the marketing guidelines of your state's uh, real estate commission. So for us, it's Trek. Um, Trek says I can't just have Kelly Williams. I actually have to have a DBA logo that has my actual KW Platinum or whichever logo, you know, whichever brokerage my license hangs at. So just be careful there. Uh, you can see there's some labs logos in here. Uh, KW DBA, right? You're never going to just put DBA. Um, and then you have some miscellaneous logos for the uh, Association of Realtors. I think this one is just a, <clears throat> yeah, National Association of Realtors, but it's PNG format. So you can kind of see if you had a red background, it would show through. Um, you know, however you wanted that to happen. So same thing with my library, we talked about that. And then finally you have KWLS. So you could come in here and actually search for a listing. Oops. And it's gonna search the KWLS system to see if it can find that actual listing. It looks like that may not be working quite. It's just giving me fits this morning. Um, so well, we'll get that corrected here. I'll report that to labs as well and find out, but typically you'd be able to search for a KWL, uh, KW listing. It would search KWLS 2.0. I know we're doing some transition right now with regards to, um, the feed. So that may be the issue there. Uh, you can also do snapshots so I could search for a market snapshot. Let's just see um if that is working fawn lake there we go fawn lake pine lakes and here is a market snapshot of the neighborhood that i live in and i could drop this information into um, a graphic if i wanted to so it tells you the average price point how many active listings how many pending listings the average days on market and the average price per square foot and then it has a little map here of the actual fawn lake pine lake neighborhood so where your neighborhood is in regards to a map of that neighborhood. So there you have uh, the different things that you can have brought in from these submenus, different images brought in. You could have different text styles and banners brought in, icons, logos, and information from neighborhood snapshots. And very soon, I'm sure we'll get this fixed, information from your actual listing being brought in. And then you could actually add the photos or the, um, description, bedroom, bathroom count, all that kind of stuff as well. So that's the very beginning of the WeBrand editor, kind of a uh, first step in the buttons and menus that are available. Obviously, this is a very powerful system. So tomorrow we'll start uh, working and playing with creating some graphics, and I'll show you some tips and tricks that we can utilize um, in this area as well with regards to colors and then um, kind of organization of layers as well. So look forward to that tomorrow. Um, I will look forward to speaking with you then. Thanks guys. Have a good night.